Hello and welcome to my video for how to make Steve from Stranger Things. So I hand drew some templates for myself and I use polystyrene and 18 gauge wires in order to make some armatures. They're very very simple armatures, you just need basically the legs uh, and the polystyrene was just for the head. So you can see here I'm just getting my paste ready. I'm showing you the weighing scales as well so you can see how much I use. I'm also using fractal colour gels, uh, full fill gels to do all my colouring. So when you're kneading your paste make sure it's nice and even but today I made it a little bit marbled. I just wanted it to look a little bit, um, bit more like jeans. So I'm also using Saracino for all of the modelling just because it blends really well. Um, so I used some white mixed in with some ready coloured black to make the grey. I've made the jeans colour with blue. Um, I've got ready coloured brown Saracino as well. But I'm also adding a pinch of black to that Saracino brown because I wanted to make a slightly darker brown as well. I actually made the demo dog for the cake but there isn't a tutorial for that one. But when you see the how to make the finished cake you'll see a little bit of the demo dog there. So when I made the armature for the body for Steve, I've actually made the bat as well because the arms are easy to be supported, but I wanted the bat to be supported too. So you can see here, the first thing I do is just cover up the body. No need to pad out butt first with foil like I normally do because the skin tone will act as a neck as well. I put a super small waistcoat on you, so I obviously rolled out far too much paste. Um, you can also look at my board and see every little square is a centimetre. So you could pause the video just to see exactly how big everything is for you. You can also see how super basic my template was on the left hand side. There, see, so it only needs to cover a little bit. Um, I had a, a brainwave while I was making the jacket as well. I was originally going to wrap the paste around and then I realised that, I, well, I'll show you the way I'm going to do it. So I work out a strip that will eventually be just the front of the, the jacket itself. But I'm going to leave that strip cool down for one minute and we're going to move on to the trousers. So with the trousers, you basically want the trousers themselves to be thick enough to look like the thickness of the legs. So again, refer back to your template. So every now and again, I would refer back to that. You also can see me point into a line that's where the trousers need to end. I made sure I put a mark in on the wire, otherwise I've been known to make the legs too long. <laughs> I'm using the PME Dresden there to put some markings into the jeans. And you can see my cornflower puff in the top right as well. So if you find your hands get a little bit sticky, just use your cornflower puff. The, the paste really does blend together very well. So you can either just use your fingers uh, to shape and deform it, or you can use any of your preferred modeling tools. You can see me using the wide end of the Dresden the most because you can both um, cup the shapes and indent them at the same time. Oh, and you can see I use the scissors a lot as well when I'm modeling, so much quicker. Pinch the bottom of the trousers as well because then it'll look like they're slightly hollowed when they go over the shape of the shoes and make sure you get some dents and creases into the jeans as well. I know it's tiny but it just looks so much cooler if you do. So this was the brainwave for the jacket. I realised I could pad out the shape of my figure by adding this piece of paste onto the back, curving it around because you can imagine if you're holding a baseball bat you'd hunch your shoulders a little bit wouldn't you? So adding that onto the back did that. So this is just the front of the jacket here. So we've zoomed in a bit so you can see. So I folded over the coll collars and I've put in some textures in with the stitch tool. But I'm also adding the little flaps on the jacket as well. Um, and it's way too tiny to, to put a proper zip in. So I'm just going to add some paler grey Sarcino. You can see how sticky it was the day I did this. I'm adding some texture first with the Dresden and then the tiny lines of the zip with my scalpel. I also trimmed off the sides as well so it looked a lot straighter. And what you do to one side, you do to the other as well, always. And don't forget that cornflower, it gets really sticky. Now there were tiny little poppers, if you like, on the jacket collar as well. 
So try to pick up your tiny pieces using your glue brush because you know what happens with our fingers. Oh, and every zip needs a zipper. <laughs> tiny details always look so much cooler for people. I decided to make it a bit shorter here in case you're wondering what I'm doing. And I left too much paste to pick up because it's a lot easier to hold if you've got spare paste to hold. And I use the scissors to trim off my excess, but you can blend it in really nicely then. And it literally does blend away to nothing, this Saracino. And it's the Saracino modeling paste I'm using, not the pasta top or the flower paste. So yeah, I work out a rough size for the bat, but it's going to reshape and it's going to get thinner. So where you saw me twiddling it, it got thinner and longer. And apologies, I can see some black on my thumb. <laughs> Squeeze it over that wire support. So now that bat is completely supported and you don't have to worry about it getting knocked or falling off. And I also use my little palette knife there quite often to mark in little dents and creases as well. So with the arms, you can see how small they are. They're about, well, not even two centimetres. And they're just the grey modelling paste, the Saracino. Bend it into a really sharp elbow shape and just press it on. If you need a bit of edible glue, do so. But usually the Saracino sticks to itself really, really well. So I'm going to have one hand holding above the bat and one hand holding below. Sorry, I couldn't say that. And I'm using the hollow end of a tool just to hollow out the ends of the sleeves. Again, pop some creases in so that's where the good old Dresden's coming back out. Now, it's got a watch on in this little, it's a Funko Pop that was going on the top of the cake. So we obviously did her an icing. I changed my mind over the side of this watch as well. So I'm just going to cut that piece in half and then use it again. There, you can see it's smaller now. I just decided it needed to be a little bit daintier. But good news, today you don't have to do hands. I know I've got a tutorial on how to make hands, but you don't need to do them today. So all we're going to do is a super small piece of skin tone and pop it into place, lean it over, and you can use your Dresden tool, you can use a scalpel, and I use the chair art hard point tool just to make the indentations for the fingers. I also add my thumbs on separately because it's a lot easier when they're this small, isn't it? So I'm going to put the, the face on the watch now. Now, I decided that the easiest way to do this was a little ball in grey and a tiny ball in white. And it's enough to give you a watch face on your sleeve. <laughs> Again, curved over the side of the bat. I used a dress, the vein inside of the Dresden there, and then I go in deeper with the chair art tool. Make sure you can see the knuckles a bit as well, and always squeeze the hand back together when you're working small. Now, the trainers, in reality, look a bit more like sliders or flip-flops, but they sit underneath the trousers, and so all you have to do is to slide them up the wire and glue them into place. And because the trousers are dry, obviously you need a little bit of glue there. Now, with the head, I obviously used the polystyrene ball for the extra support, didn't I? So I really just need to blend it underneath. You will need a bit of edible glue to, to fix that skin tone paste on there. But use the scissors to trim off your excess. You're never going to get the right amount first time. And then roll the head because <laughs> Funko Pops have got like upright heads and flat tops and flat bottoms. So roll it on your workboard. Apologies, it went a bit blurry here. It's actually focusing on my hands, not on the Funko Pop. But you can see I put a dent in for the eyes and then dropped in little balls of black paste. The nose was the simplest nose in the world, as were the eyebrows. And the hair is just a strip of brown Saracino wrapped around the back. I rolled a ball for the ears, cut it in half and fixed one on for each. And then don't forget to pull some hair in front of the ears. There we go. Oh, I'm blending in a little bit, but it doesn't matter too much because the hair is going to cover the front of the ears anyway, isn't it? Now, I do go on to put some lines on the hair. So you can use the veining tool of your Dresden. You can also use a PME cutting wheel. But I just wanted it to look like one of those plastic Funko Pop toys, you know? Add on the quiff separately, though. So much cooler with the quiff separately. <laughs> 
So there he is with all of the texture in and a bit of texture on the floor as well. So if you liked watching this, make sure you head over and watch my Stranger Things full cake tutorial as well. Anyway, take care, happy caking, and thank you ever so much for watching.